Good day. You are watching Presky, Johannes Beck, the Kimbangis Media, and I am Regina. The Kimbangis community is celebrating the 60th anniversary of the death of their heroine, Mama Mwilu Mary Kiawanga Nsitane. Who was Mama Mwilu? This was the spouse of Father Simon Kimbangu. <laughs> Father Yefa from London. Let's hear from him. Father Yefa, good day, sir. We are listening. Mamwilu was involved in uh, her husband's ministry okay. from the 6th of April 1921 to the day she passed mm -hmm. on April the 7th, April 27th, 1959. Mm -hmm. She was a witness of the relationship that her husband had with uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. She was the first person ever to ring the bell, which announced the beginning of Maggie's movement on April the 6th, 1921, at 6 a.m. in Kamba. Mama great achievement is to have taken over the Kim Mangis movement, as her husband, Baba Simon Kimbangu, had been given a life sentence and was deported. She went through great sufferings. Mama Mwilu was beaten by colonial soldiers. She was isolated so that no one could help her her or her children. She was also left to starve and mistreated. People would mock and insult her. Despite that period of persecution for the Kimangists community, Mama Mwilu would organize secret meetings with the followers and would also warmly welcome in secret those coming to Nkamba. Mamwilu knew how to comfort people and help many Kimbangists in their faiths. She also resisted many temptations she had to face in her situation. Mamwilu never lost her dignity. She remained faithful to God and faithful to her husband. She had great determin determination. Mamwilu managed to teach Kimbangis values to generations of followers. She gave the teaching of teachings of Papa Simon Kimbangu and she also spiritually prepared the future future elders of the church. On the 12th of April 1959, she appointed the first catechist and also gave to her son, Papa Tengenda, the main responsibility of the Kimangis movement, which later became the Kimangis church. She did the will of God by being a role model for all Kimangis through the strength of her faith. A few days before April 27th, 1959, she said, you have to let me go to the Father to ask him in your favor so that he will fulfill the promises he made for you. April 27th, 1959, she passed away. She left this world, but on December the 24th, 1959, the same year, after four decades of persecutions, the colonial power officially recognized the Kimbangis church. Mamwil was buried in Gombe Kisuka, just outside the village of Kamba, which was occupied by the colonial authorities at the time. She passed away. But in 2009, 50 years later, her body was transferred to Kamba inside the mausoleum where uh, buried her husband and her sons. More revelations were made in 2009. The Kimangis Church declared publicly that Mama Mwilu and Virgin Mary are the same person. Each year, on 
April 27th, the Kimagis community pays a great tribute to Mama Mwilo. In 1959, people were very sad at her funeral because she had been such a great person. But that sadness was turned into joy when all the people present saw angels rejoicing in the sky and Papa Simon Kimango himself welcoming Mama Mwilo in heaven. We all must, we must, we must all be very grateful to what she has accomplished. She is a real role model, not only for Kimangis females, but also for all of us. As the song says, Mama Mwilu, Swalo Kumuna Yo, Mama Mwilu, may you receive the honor that you deserve. We finish like this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now we have another guest speaker today. That will be from Zambia. We have Mr. Matelo. Sir, good day. You're welcome. We are listening. Well, thank you. Uh, just like mm -hmm. the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter, 11, chapter 3, verse 11, that in the same way, the women are to be worthy of respect, not malicious talkers, but temperate and trustworthy in everything. And here we are today in 2019 celebrating the 159 years, the 139 rather, years of our existence on earth. On the other hand, we are commemorating the 60 years of her passing on in 1959. And exactly 10 years since her exhumation and triumphant entry back to Jerusalem to be among the saints in 2009. So us Kimbangis really consider this 27th of April as the day of black women because Above all, Mama Mwilu Kewanga was a heroine and an inspiration to look upon. Mother Mwilu had totally devoted herself to her husband's mission. From the moment Father Simon Kimbangu was called, she supported him indef indefectibly, both morally and by her actions. After all, she all was right. the one who rang the bell marking the beginning of so the ministry why? of love. As expressed in Kikongo, they would say Kintwadi. That time it was Kintwadi movement okay. in 1921. Kintwadi movement, she was the one who had rung that bell. Mm -hmm. And during the 30 years of Father Simon Kimbangu's imprisonment, oh. Mother Mwilu Kiawanga was placed also under house arrest in Gombe Kinsuka. Okay. So then, uh, she was placed there with her two youngest sons. Despite the isolation, persecutions, they imposed misery, the proposals of some men to get her out of the righteous way. She remained faithful and persevered in her way because she understood that the mission of Father Simon Kimbangu was more important to her than her well-being and that of her children. Even after the death of Father Simon Kimbangu in 1951, she remained the head of the, of the then Kintwadi movement, like I said earlier, for eight years she led that movement for eight years until she was convinced that her youngest son father Jangenda kuntima joseph was due now to take over from the father then 15 days after handing over the leadership to father Jangenda kuntima mama Mwilu died having dedicated her life to her husband's mission indeed mother Mwilu kiawanga nzitani she was and still remains an example for all black women. Thank you. Thank you so much to you both. Now, I'm inviting you, all of you, all of us, let's go to Nkamba. See you there. Bye-bye.